Hello everyone. First video while I'm actually in Africa. Uh, took me about a day and a half to get here in total. Um, it was a pretty long journey. I think the first flight was 16 hours almost and then I had about a five hour wait in Doha and then a five and a half hour flight from Doha to Nairobi. Um, it was pretty exciting when I arrived. Um, first thing you see as you leave the airport is a gentleman holding a machine gun. So <laughs> you don't see that in Australia. Um, my ride didn't um, wasn't waiting for me. So that was a nice surprise when I arrived with my backpacks and, you know, looking very tired, wanting a shower. Um, but I found someone who called the company for me and I ended up having a ride there within five minutes or so, so that wasn't too bad. Um, ride over, as in the bus transfer from the airport to my host home, was went for about an hour and it was insane. Um, like the roads there, the roads here, I should say, um, they have lanes, but no one follows <laughs> the lanes at all. It's kind of like a free for all. Um, there's people setting up shops at the side of the road and anything is, can turn into a pop-up shop. You had people like, uh, on brickwork setting out jeans and t-shirts and dresses to sell, um, Coca-Cola stands were like every 200 meters or so with people selling drinks, um, foreign exchange and pretty much anything that could be on the side of a road was turned into a shop. So it was pretty intense. I wasn't expecting that. Um, what else happened? Um, I get, yeah, the journey took about an hour. Um, lots of people walk, um, including in between traffic, which is pretty nerve wracking see there's like six lanes of traffic and people just meandering on through like it's nobody's business um that would never happen in australia um well it would but it'd be beeped at incessantly um when i arrived at the home there was only a couple of other volunteers here which was well, not well, not what i thought i thought there'd be like a house full of them but most of them are out on placements so people out in mombasa which is by the coast, um, Maasai, Thika is another place. Um, so there was only like two or three people here, um, but I made friends pretty easily. It was good. It was was probably in hindsight good that it was only a handful of people because you know it was a bit more intimate. And you get to know people a bit better. And um, that day, I, I think I got into the host home at about four because my flight went in at two thirty local time. And we walked down to the mall there, um, which is about a 15 minute walk. And I got myself a SIM card, which didn't fit, unfortunately. Um, but that this was a very interesting night though, because uh, the person who took me there had to come back early. Um, and me being me, he said, oh no, that's fine. I, you know, I, um, I'll, I'll be able to find my way back. I've got a good sense of direction, which for the most part was true. But by the time everything was fixed and I bought my bottled water and I bought my SIM card, um, and you know, my sundries, um, it was about quarter to seven and by then it was getting a bit dusky. So the sun was going down. Um, I didn't know which bus to catch. So I decided to walk cause it was only about a 15, 20 minute walk. Um, and so off I, tr off I trotted, got darker and darker as I went along. I remembered all the landmarks on the way there. Um, but as I was getting close, and it got really dark, I pretty much lost my way. I walked straight past the street. I had to turn down for my host home um, and ended up walking through, which in I would never plan this, but I'm glad it happened. Um, walking through like this slum area where there was sheds, well, shed houses all on the side of the road. You could smell bonfires. There was bonfires, people walking around everywhere. Again, people selling their wares. Um, it, I guess it could have been dangerous, especially if I was a woman. But I was pretty excited and, you know, looking at my surroundings, I gauged that it wasn't that bad. Um, again, I wouldn't do it on purpose, but I'm glad it happened. It was a really good insight of what life is like. It was, this was a Saturday night as well, like on a weekend night, sort of in those areas. Um, 
it was really interesting, so vibrant. Like I, if I would go back I, um, with a group of people and locals just to experience it. There was a few bars you walk past that are kind of set up um, with a few sheds in a row with the with the walls knocked out. They're selling Tusca, which is a local beer. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm actually glad that happened and I managed to find my way back um, by, <laughs> by luck almost. I turned back around, um, recognised a few sort of landmarks again from when I left, um, but a lady pulled up and helped me out and called the, the, the my host mum here. And it turns out I was only about a minute walk away um, from where I needed to be anyway, so not too bad. Anyway, that was a really long-winded and possibly boring story, but I can only have a small window to film this before I shoot off to the mall again with a new... A new set of people that arrived. Um, I hope you enjoyed that update and I hope it wasn't too boring and thank you for listening and subscribing. Um, and oh, one more thing is I do, I've decided to blog as well as vlog. So I've, I've started up a WordPress and um, a blogging account. So I'll be doing that as well. Um, so I'll put in a link below so you can follow that. And also for anyone subscribing, that um, isn't sort of privy to what I was doing previously in order to do um, this trip. I did um, create a fundraiser crowdfunding page, which I'll also put in the link below if you want to um, help me out for the rest of my trip. I'm almost got enough money raised for South Africa. Um, so if you so choose, links are below to follow my blog and to fun, um, fun <laughs> donate, that's what I was looking for, to my crowdfunding page. So thanks everyone and I look forward to giving you another update soon.